Hello, everybody. Uh, it's good to have you all watching this vlog. Um, it's a post-trip vlog. Uh, when we were in Ukraine, uh, there was really no chance to do any team vlogs. Uh, I tried, and our host, Ivan Rusin, and his wife, Luda, kept us busy uh, from pretty much the Sun up till sundown. Uh, that it was pretty remarkable how busy we were, and and one of the people that I really was looking forward to introducing to you all, Susan Montoya. Um, she's usually the face behind the camera, which you never get to see. So I'm glad, Susan. Thanks for joining us uh, for this vlog. Um, Susan, why don't you tell us just a little bit about um, yourself? And, and and here's what I'm thinking. Um, how has life changed for you because of the war in Ukraine? Yeah, when the war broke out, I saw the news and I wanted to help in any way I could. And I started with an organization called Volunteers for Ukraine. I worked for them for a little bit. And then through our church, I had an opportunity to go on an outreach foundation trip to the border or Lithuania, Poland, and Spain. Um, I'd never heard of the Outreach Foundation. I never heard of Lithuania. And I said yes. So we went. And from that trip, we met many Ukrainians that had fled the country. And what I saw, what well, I was I came back inspired. I came back by all the people. Uh, inspired by all the people who had opened their homes, their churches, their schools, all the people we met. So that inspired me to come back home and sign up to host a family. I came home, ho uh, signed up, and pretty quickly after that, I got a family of four. It's a husband and wife and two kids, and they've been in my home for about a year and a half. And my life has been completely blessed by that. Um, and I would say that it was from that first Outreach Foundation trip that I was inspired and had the courage to do something like that. Um, so now we just call ourselves one big family. <laughs> so it's changed. Well, it's been great. Well, and you had an opportunity to visit part of that family. Uh, you joined us in Ukraine and, and this is a little out of sequence, but you had an opportunity to visit family members of the family that's staying with you, correct? Twice actually. Yeah. Uh, the first one, uh, this is my fourth Outreach Foundation trip. I love the Outreach Foundation. <laughs> we love you. Um, <laughs> I went to Turkey last year, and uh, the, hus the husband who lives in my home, his sister fled to Turkey. So mm -hmm. I added that to our trip, and I got to meet his sister. And on this trip in Ukraine, um, the Ella's father lives in Kharkiv. And I got to, you know, we got to take a side road and seven minutes off our trail, we got to go see him for like five minutes. And I gave him a big hug and got to meet him. And it was wonderful. Yeah, that was neat watching you two. Again, most of us didn't know exactly what was going on um, during that time, but it, it was obviously making an impact on, on you. What was it like? Uh, in that moment to see the father of the woman of Ella who's been staying with you and you know how was that received by Ella that you know to to know uh, that you had done that um I was overcome by emotion I just felt um even now <laughs> it was very emotional yeah <laughs> and and yeah, I think the way that you just embodied what it means to show up in that moment. Yeah. And we we talked a lot about showing up. And 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 folks, just to give you a sense of the context, Kharkiv on that day, you know, they, you know, there were we were we were driving into Kharkiv under a ballistic missile threat. So this isn't just some kind of wonderful, beautiful day. Um <laughs> You know, Susan kind of took advantage of the time and uh, during a missile uh, threat decided let's let's go in to do this and that's what showing up means. Uh, it doesn't happen when it's the easiest time. Uh, and when we left the alarms were going off the air radius yes. alert alarms were going off when we left. Yeah. Um, but 
I feel like for me, there was something special about the physical connection. Like you said, showing up, I think even we only had five minutes, but I think that five minutes was the world Yeah. for, for him and for the family. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you, and you did very well with that. So Susan, how let's, let's back back it up a chest a little bit. Uh, one of the opportunities that we had, the main focus of the visit in terms of something that we did was to work with uh, a variety of military chaplains and their spouses mm -hmm. uh, uh, during a resiliency <clears throat> retreat. And you had an opportunity to really sit with a lot of those women. Uh, you were the only woman on our team and um, and you had an opportunity to pull hear from them and when we broke up from men and from women, why did, what were your takeaways from that? Um, <clears throat> we uh, we broke out into a separate room and I asked them how their lives had changed. And um, I was expecting that they wouldn't want to share uh, culturally. I think they don't like to open up, but they all wanted to be in one big group and share. So the first story I heard was that they had lost, uh, one woman had lost everything. She left her home and she felt like um, she wasn't materialistic, but when she had to leave all of her things, she she had a really hard time. And this was a common theme. They all had a hard time leaving, but when they came back, because most of them came back, they realized that everything that they lost was not important to them anymore. What they came away with was that they wanted their family, their God, and their church um, and that was really all that they needed. And many of them started organizations to help children and village people around, you know, where they live. Um, so they they found they had a new life as well. And mm -hmm. I think that that's that was the theme of all the women there. They really didn't need a lot of stuff. They wanted their families. One of the women that we had a chance to visit with, and I thought you did a great job, Susan, just connecting very personally, um, almost right away with each of the women that that we met. But one of the women we did saw see um, again was Lucia, who we who Vic Petrenko was pleased to give the the Molly Pitcher Award, and thank you for taking the video on that. What did you make of her and her spirit? Uh, I think she embodied the spirit of Ukraine. She had so much energy and vibrancy. She was young. She wasn't broken. Um, she she was ready to fight and to do whatever she could to save her country. And it was it was just it was a great experience to meet her. So. Yeah. <laughs> I talk about courage. I I think yeah. that if if you put a thousand of her. And those front lines, they win the war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not a problem. <laughs> um, another woman that you connected with, obviously, was our host, um, was you know Luda Rusin. Mm. And I was so happy to see that that uh, you were able to come to to Ukraine and and connect with her. What? Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, she's the reason I came. I I met Luda once last year, and I was so impressed with who she was. I really wanted to come and see her in her country. Um, I learned from her that she's the general manager of the largest Toyota dealer in Ukraine. And when the war started, I heard all of the things they did at Toyota um, to really help. And I was, I was just blown away by this beautiful, small <laughs> woman and what she could do in that moment, they um, they kept the dealer open. They donated cars to um, the military. They painted them. They serviced them. Mm -hmm. um, and even with her employees, she just really took care of them. And her employees went out and helped take care of all those people that couldn't leave Ukraine. They put flyers on doors. They delivered food. Um, and they kept the dealer open for people to come and have coffee and tea and and warmth um, and just companionship. So she still does that today. I got to go see the Toyota dealership. And she just really is, I think, just not just during the war, but even just as a businesswoman, she's she's my hero. 
I say ditto to all that. And I was just really glad, though, that we were able to have you here. Uh, friends, if you see, my dog is with us on this call, too. So Poppy <clears throat> likes to sit on my lap. Uh, so, so Susan, reflect with me just as a, I think as a final kind of question. How how do you see God at work in Ukraine? I mean, we focus on the war and how miserable it is. Um, a lot of us actually have have kind of forgotten that there is a war, which is which is something we're trying to remind people that that no, it actually is still going on. Um, but what? How do you see God at work um, there? Um, I see uh, God at work through the hands and people of the people that are still there. I was so impressed by even people you wouldn't even normally maybe notice. They're just kind of in the background. Um, I felt like they were all heroes. I mean, I just, I just would look and see how much of their, how much of their lives they were pouring out for other people. And that was really inspiring to me. Um, every, every corner we turned, I would meet inspirational people that were helping others. And that's where I see God working that church. We visited at the the border um those children and everything they they just are coming together as a community and everybody's helping each other and that's where i see uh god working is in the people that are there and when you say the church at the border which border are you talking about uh the one by donetsk i think that's okay it. yeah i wanted to yeah. make sure people it wasn't on the western side yeah we, we, <laughs> no, that... it, it, the, the border yeah. by uh, when we went to Donetsk, where the whole right. village had been bombed and yeah. all those people were coming together and supporting each other and they they haven't given up. I um, I just felt encouraged. I and we delivered food to them. And um, I understand that, like one of uh, Yvonne's people that work with him, um, Vasile, he goes there once a month and he he's just this quiet guy, but he's so amazing. He, all the stories that I heard about him and he still goes down once a month and delivers things. So there's so many inspirational stories about the people I met. I go there and I think I'm encouraged when I come home to do more. Um, so I can't say that I feel like I do a lot when I go, but I, I understand that, um, showing up matters to them. And Luda told me that specifically. She said showing up matters. It means that we're not forgotten and people still remember that there's a war going on. So I understand the importance of it, but then I also am changed when I go and I come back and I try and do more here. So I think you just put it out so well and we try to show up and and even our partners are saying that that's the blessing. Uh, yes. What's one thing that, or one or two things that that you heard that you hope people hear from Ukraine? What what are they? What did they? What stuck out to you as saying? Because we always asked, what do you want us to tell? What what's the thing that you want us to share? What, why don't <laughs> take take this opportunity to share that? Besides more patriots, <laughs> more patriot missiles. More patriot. Right. <laughs> um, they really. Many people thanked us uh, as the United States for their support. They don't want to be forgotten. Um, and they just say thank you. They just, they're just, they're amazing people. And they just wanted to say thank you and don't forget us. Well said, well put. Well, Susan, thanks for being willing to do this. I know it's not your favorite thing to sit in front <laughs> of the camera, but um uh, thanks for doing that. And you showed just great courage uh, and bravery to come with us into Ukraine. Um, I know several people who said they would want to come, but they couldn't do it in the end um, uh, for one reason or another, and you stuck true to it. So thanks for doing that. You are an incredible warrior of Christ, uh, bringing the gospel uh, in the true sense of the word to those who needed to hear it. And and thanks for doing that there and at home. Uh, so, all right, everybody, thanks for joining us. And we look forward to uh, bringing more news about Ukraine uh, in the coming uh, days and months ahead. Uh, and look forward to sharing with you some, some initiatives as well as we try to continue to respond 
uh, uh, to the needs that are there. Uh, thanks for your prayers for this visit, and uh, God bless to each and every one of you.